Is your child using a pacifier and you're wondering, when am I supposed to stop using this? Or maybe you're looking for the encouragement that it's time to kick the habit of the pacifier. This episode, this video, we're gonna cover it all, when to stop the pacifier for your child and the one guarantee that I wanna make that will change when you do. Campbell, your pediatric sleep consultant. Welcome to the Little Z Sleep YouTube channel and podcast. If you have been a longtime listener since 2018, we started this podcast. Welcome back. I am so glad you're here. If you are new to our YouTube channel, hello, make sure you subscribe as well as on the podcast, wherever you listen. And it is our joy every week to help you make getting sleep help easy. And in this video, I hope to make the transition out of the pacifier and knowledge on when do we stop this really simple. Now I have to acknowledge that I have done many episodes, blogs, podcasts, videos on no longer using the pacifier. And it's not really a secret here at Little Z's that I am anti-pacifier, but we're going to talk on a plain level here because there are some families that use the pacifier. And like, I'm very aware of the fact that there are families who do our sleep training program and keep the pacifier, even though I clearly say like, don't do it. So we're just gonna have a conversation today about when should you stop using the pacifier and what are some of those signs that you know it's time? I believe as a sleep professional, you no longer need to use the pacifier after four months old. When your child turns 16 weeks from due date, the pacifier is gone. However, I know that there are babies, toddlers, and sometimes preschoolers walking around with a pacifier. So when, let's just say if, you didn't know what I do, and we were to meet on the street, and you were to be like, yeah, I just don't know, like, when should I stop using this? I wouldn't come at you judgmentally. I would first ask you, well, what made you come to that decision? Usually there's some type of catalyst that's like, oh, I guess, should we stop this? Maybe it's a public comment. Maybe you have an older child and someone like made that comment to you. Like, I can't believe your four-year-old still using a pacifier. Maybe it was something that happened with um, their own pacifier or they lost it. And then it like, they just went ballistic and you're like, wow, this pacifier is really causing some like behavior issues. Maybe it's something with their speech. You're thinking like, huh, they're not talking as clearly. They're not being as vocal as I'd like to. It Maybe is it because of the pacifier? I don't know. Um, or maybe it's because their sleep is being disturbed and you're doing the scatter technique that I've talked about where you just put a lot of pacifiers in the crib and you notice that your child's waking constantly looking for them. Um, and you also are waking up because they're waking up. So there could be a variety of factors that you start to question like, huh, is it time to stop using the pacifier? And if I were to be perfectly honest with you, which, which I am, um, I would say if you're starting to doubt it, then it's time to stop. That's my one filter. If you're starting to doubt like, you know what, things are just kind of like, I didn't really think we'd have a four-year-old with a pacifier or, you know, I really do want them to be talking more and engaging more. Um, you know what, I really actually have noticed that our sleep is taking a nosedive because I'm having to constantly go in and give them a pacifier, then it's time to stop. I want to be very like level with you. If you are, you probably aren't watching this or listening to this because the pacifier is working. Um, I have had families say, Becca, you say to get rid of the pacifier, but I have a 10 month old who's sleeping 12 hours a night and they use a pacifier. To which I would say like, great, hey, if it's working for you, you do you. But I know again, as a sleep consultant, that sleep is directly linked to having a consistent night. And if there's a pacifier thrown in, they're fully waking up, grabbing the thing to put themselves back to sleep. But if it's becoming an issue, you need to stop. The thing is, I am here on a screen talking to you and I appreciate that. I am not in your home making the everyday situations happen and calling the shots. That's up to you and your family. And that's the beautiful part of being a parent is that you get to decide the path you want your family to go down. But I hope having some influence on the screen talking to you, I hope that you can start to dig deep and be like, why am I doubting that it's time? Like, why did you Google, when should I stop the pacifier, right? Is it because things are happening that you're already wondering, like, ah, this is affecting our sleep. It's affecting behavior. I think the biggest thing that I've seen with behavior is that it causes your child to be completely like a volcano eruption. When they don't have the pacifier and they erupt in this misbehavior or this big tantrum, that is from parent to parent and from parent professional speaking to you, that is something we need to address. 
I wanna just look down the road. This is something that I talk about in my toddler, especially my preschool sleep training. After going into many families' homes over the years, I can tell really quickly who calls the shots, the parent or the child. And I'm just here to tell it to you straight. If your child is calling the shots, sleep is going to be a disaster. You also can't expect your child to listen to you during the nighttime, like, no, you're not gonna have the pacifier if you're not following through during the day. So who would have thought that the idea of getting rid of the pacifier actually comes back to how you're parenting and your boundaries and your consistency there. But I needed to just say that finally on this video because oftentimes a toddler who has the pacifier, if they don't have it and you feel like you're in a panic and like, you're almost nervous, like, oh no, what's my child gonna do? Like, what are they gonna say to me because I don't have the pacifier ready for them? That's actually an issue. And we wanna make sure that your child knows they don't need to depend on someone or something like the pacifier, that they are fully equipped. They have all the tools they need and they can confidently put themselves to sleep every single time. If you have a baby and you're starting to notice that there's, again, their sleep is just having an impact in this, they're waking up throughout the night, you're going in multiple times to give them the pacifier, here's why this is happening. When we sleep throughout the nighttime, we go through different sleep cycles. Our body goes through different cycles throughout the night and these cycles last around 90 minutes. In these cycles, we have different stages of sleep and there goes from um, REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement, non-REM deep sleep. It goes through the entire cycle of sleep for your child and for ourselves. But what the detriment to the pacifier, what's happening here is that your child is depending, your baby is depending on the pacifier to put themselves to sleep. Drowsiness is the very first stage of sleep. So what they've been doing is using this pacifier to get drowsy to then go into the next stage and complete the cycle of sleep. But then, especially during deep sleep, the pacifier pops out and the child loses that. Okay, so then what happens is that they wake up and they are stranded without anything or someone to help them get back to drowsiness. So then what happens is they cry out, they call out, you have to go in, find the pacifier, give it back to them. Then the whole cycle repeats. They suck on the pacifier to get drowsy, they get into the next stage of sleep and then the cycle ends and then they wake up, they don't have a pacifier, ah, and it's just a rinse, wash and repeat all night long. If that has been happening either all throughout the night, every 90 minutes, or it's been happening a couple of times a night, I just need you to know that's not normal. Your child, your baby can sleep 11 to 12 hours all throughout the night. They can use my favorite attached pacifiers, their fingers. When they get to be 12 months or older, they can use a stuffed animal or a blanket to help soothe themselves to sleep. If they are under 12 months old, they can roll around the crib. They can find their cozy position, just like you and me do all throughout the night. They can put themselves back to sleep. So when do we stop using the pacifier? I believe you should stop using the pacifier at four months old. But if you're beyond that, then I need to ask you, why did you find this topic? Was there something that's starting to trigger in your mind? Like, I think this is an issue. And if you're finding that's an issue, it's time to stop. How do we stop, Becca? How do I stop the habit of the pacifier? My answer is you throw it in the trash can and that's the end of that. But some of you guys may be looking for a little bit simpler, maybe slower methodical path towards that. If you have a baby, there's really nothing you can do except for just throw it away because obviously a four to 12 month old, you can't communicate with them in clear words and sentences and they aren't talking back to you. It's just no more pacifier. From night one of our sleep training plans, no more pacifier. And if you're confused on what to do, then I suggest you check out our baby sleep training program because I'm gonna tell you how to handle the sleep training when there's no more passy involved. If you have a 12 month old and older, they can have a stuffed animal. So instead of just cold turkey, no more passy, perhaps you wanna introduce a stuffed animal along with the pacifier and allow them to start to latch onto the stuffed animal. And after a few nights, you get rid of the pacifier. If you have an older child, a preschooler who's been addicted to the pacifier, maybe they have the wubbin up, where there's the stuffed animal attached to the pacifier, have a very clear communication and talk with your preschooler about how they're such a big kid, they don't need this pacifier anymore, so we're gonna cut the pacifier off and maybe see if they'll do it, but they can still have the wubbin up to it. I've also heard clients who they actually cut the top nipple part of the pacifier off, so it's no longer that same effect. There's of course like weaning systems out there and all the things, find what works best for you and your family. It's kind of like sleep training. When you're getting rid of the pacifier, I want you to find the solution and the philosophy that you drive with best. Here at Little Z's, we want you to ditch it cold turkey. If that's like startling to you, then maybe make a plan. Maybe over a one week time, you're gonna work towards no more passy. And what does that look like for you if that's an older child, how can you maybe implement some rewards with that? If it's a baby or a young toddler, how are you going to see that success through? No matter what you decide to do, here's my one thing I need everyone to commit to. Are you ready? 
consistency. Be consistent in your plan. In fact, why don't you tell a close friend or a family member or someone like what your plan is so they can help keep you accountable. Hey, better yet, comment below and tell us what your plan is. There is no better community. I love all of our Little Z's families and you guys have very similar sleep philosophies. So I bet if you're finding this as a new Little Z's fan, hello, welcome. Um, but if you're finding this as a, a new person coming into our world of sleep, check out below to see what other people have done. And if you have had a plan and you wanna type that below, we wanna help keep you accountable to that. So share with us what your plan is as you ditch that pacifier. And above all, be consistent. Don't back out of your plan, especially if you tell your child you're gonna do something, follow through and do it. So this video was a little bit different. It wasn't like a step-by-step -step plan or method that maybe you're used to here at Little Z's, but I wanted to encourage you today, when should you stop using the pacifier? That's only an answer that you and your family can give, but I hope this gave you some points to consider and especially give you a plan of action for how to make it happen. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and to this podcast because our joy every week is to help you make getting sleep help easy. And especially as you ditch that pacifier, things may go a little off, but we are going to be here to get you back on track. Sweet dreams. See you next time.